Hi there, John Heffernan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this session, I'm going to do a little writing workshop with you. I'm often asked to write sequels to my books. You know, follow-on stories. Readers frequently send me ideas too, telling me what they think happens next in a book I've written. I even receive fully finished edited stories. They're wonderful. So in this session, I'm actually going to give you a chance to write a sequel to one of my books. You might know the book, The Island, but in case you don't, I'm going to give you a video reading of the book right now. And actually, even if you do know the book, it won't hurt to check out this reading just to refresh your mind. After that, we'll get thinking about what might happen next in the story. The Island, written by John Heffnan, illustrated by Peter Sheehan. There was once a hard-working tribe that rarely smiled and never laughed. The tribe lived on an island. It was a beautiful island, but the people were too busy to notice. All except one, a blind urchin who slept under the stars. The urchin heard the sighs of the sea and listened to the whispers of the breeze. He felt the welcome of the sun as it woke the day, and he could smell the scent of a storm. He felt the air change when the sea birds wheeled, heard the fish as they slid through the bay, and knew better than anyone the tickle of sand between his toes. In the morning, he let the island reveal its treasures, swirling shells and time-worn pebbles, crinkled sponges, sculptured coral, and the twisted limbs of driftwood. In the afternoon, he squatted on the pavement, surrounded by his riches. He held them up for all to see, and any to take, but no one did. Early one morning, the boy heard a faint sound, far out in the bay. It was something he didn't recognise. He waited and listened as it slid closer. Soon a creature was at the water's edge. The boy stroked it, and liked what his fingers felt. Soft, rubbery lips, scales that trembled, slithery skin, warm and wet with life. The urchin smiled. When the creature slid back into the water, the boy followed. Soon they were playing together in the waves, and a strange sound tumbled from their lips. They laughed. The people of the tribe ran to the water's edge. It's a monster, they yelled. Come away! But the boy didn't hear them. He was laughing so loud. The boy's laughter swirled around the people. It drew them into the water, and soon the whole tribe was playing with the creature. Waves of laughter washed up the beach. The people liked how laughing made them feel. Every day they played with the creature until it left with the sinking sun. Our hard work has at last been rewarded, the people told each other. We have happiness. Oh, yes, but um, what if the creature does not come one day, someone asked. Yeah, what if it goes away and never returns? Oh, well, that must not be allowed to happen, the people agreed. We must capture the creature and keep it forever. So they caught it, and dragged it off to a pool. After that, the people came to the pool every day. They swam and dived and paddled with the creature, but they didn't notice it was changing before their eyes. Only the urchin noticed, and he knew that the life of the creature was trickling away like sand through his fingers. So late one night, when the rest of the tribe were asleep, the boy helped the creature escape. 
The creature was exhausted, but the boy pulled and shoved, and little by little dragged it to the shore. The tide crept in, and the sea gathered around the creature. Its skin trembled, an eye opened, a tentacle moved. As the sun lifted itself from the sea, they drifted away. The next day, the people searched the island, but all they found were a few scales lying in the sand. They sat on the beach and waited, but saw no sign of the creature or the boy. They called to the sea, but heard no reply. They still wait on the shore. Sometimes they imagine they see the boy and the creature rising and falling in the waves, and sometimes they even hear laughter. But to most of them, it still seems far away. The end. Okay, there it is, the end. Well, hang on, no, it isn't the end, is it? It's actually the start, the start of your story. Your book, if you like. <laughs> we need a title for it, of course. Uh, I think we call it something like Beyond the Island. That's something to start with. You might change it down the track. Sure. But um, so we've got Beyond the Island, uh, written by, well, whatever your name is. <laughs> All right. Let's get those creative juices flowing and grab some thoughts and ideas about this story. First off, Who's going to tell the story? Who will be the narrator? I see three main possibilities here. First, we can go with the same storyteller that was used in the first book, The Island, you know, a third person narrator. But I'd like to try something a little bit different, you know. Um, maybe the boy could tell the story, the urchin. There's a slight problem there, of course. The boy is blind, so he won't be able to describe what he sees because he doesn't see. But I think we can get around that by having the urchin see through the creature's eyes. The boy has such a close bond with this creature that he comes to see the world through its eyes. Yeah, I like that idea. But there's a third possibility, that this story is told by the sea creature. Its thoughts become the story, told in the creature's voice. And I, I think I like that one the best of all. And for the purpose of this YouTube session, I'm going to go with that last idea and have the creature tell the story. It doesn't really matter what you choose. You can, you can decide any of those things or, or something else, because what I've got, we've got to talk about now will apply to whichever narrator you choose or storyteller. The second thing though that we must do is make a plan for the story. We have to have a plan for a story because if you don't, what happens is you, you just keep writing away and then you get somewhere and you go, oh, it's like painting yourself into a corner. You you haven't worked things out properly. So, so it's important to have a bit of a plan. You don't have to have anything really complicated. Just keep it simple. In fact, a simple plan is often the best thing of all. Start with a rough story outline in your mind, something like something like this. The boy and the creature leave the island, which is what's happened. And they sail across the seas, which is what they're going to do. And they, they see things and they have adventures, and uh, good and bad. Eventually, they end up somewhere special. Maybe the creature's home, where, where the creature originally lived before it came to the island. This is a really simple outline, but from it, I can see four main parts to our story. With the creature as the narrator. Part one, <laughs> the story starts with the boy and the creature sailing away from the island. Now, we, we could use a sentence like this to kick off with. As the sun lifted itself from the sea, we drifted away, the boy standing on my back, holding tight. <laughs> Maybe get down what their feelings are as yes, they sail away. The creature must be happy, of course. He, he's alive, he's free. But he might feel some sadness in the boy, because the urchin is, is leaving his home. Perhaps the, the creature decides that he's going to take the boy somewhere really nice, where he too can start a whole new life. 
part two. Right, now part two. This is, maybe it's to do with them on the sea. Their first few days on the sea. Another simple sentence could start that. Our first days were wonderful. And then you could have some beautiful descriptive writing telling us why it was wonderful crossing the seas. Make the reader wish that they were on the beautiful sea, gentle sun shimmering across its azure skin, and so on and so forth. Part three. We don't want to let the reader relax too much, so maybe here's where you, you put something in to get them a bit really interested. Maybe this next section starts with something like but then, things turned nasty. Okay, think about how things might turn nasty. Pirates appear. Or sharks attack. Or a, a violent storm blows up in the distance. What you're doing here is you're setting up suspense. Suspense is really important in a story. A black ship looms on the horizon and spears towards them. Or... Fins slice through the water, circling ever closer. Or dark clouds build in the distance, splintered by lightning. Oh, okay, so you've got suspense. Now you follow suspense with action. Yeah, fighting off the pirates, perhaps, or, or battling the ferocious sharks, or, or weathering a fierce storm. You choose which one of those you want to do. And then we come to part four. Finally, you can end your story by having the creature go somewhere special, maybe its own home, that special place where he really feels at peace. Eventually, I took the boy to a very special place. Okay, now we've got to think about this special place. Where, where, where is it and, 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 and what makes it special? It could be another island, sure, that's fine. But I, I think you have to go somewhere else, somewhere special, somewhere, somewhere different. Uh, maybe uh, a sunken palace in a cave beneath the waves. Or a misty world way up in the clouds. Maybe the creature lives in the clouds. Or maybe the creature lives somewhere way over the rainbows. What you do here will make your story quite mysterious, quite intriguing and probably leave you room for another sequel. I don't know. Look, I think, that's, I think that's really enough from me for now, but let me just finish by pointing out that what you have in this outline are many of the elements that make up a good story. You've got a, a, an emotional opening. You've got some powerful descriptive writing. You've got some suspense to keep the reader on edge. You've got action to excite and thrill the reader. And you've got a happy ending. It's all a wonderful story arc. <laughs> and you could present all this in different forms. You could write it as a short story, sure. You could present it as a picture book, wonderful. You could even do a little piece of drama with it, a, a play or, or maybe a video if you want to. It really is all up to you. <laughs> Happy writing. Yeehaw.